While other people have been in school, I've been at home. I've still had the education I needed, even though I've never been in the system. And all I've known is the structure of a carefree system with an organised schedule. But what is home education? And why is it rising in popularity in the UK? And why is home education deemed as one of the last resorts for some parents? As someone who is home educated, I know that homeschooling now is very different to how I was educated from a young age. I was home educated from the age of 5 to 17, taught by my mother, who also schooled my three older siblings with an American Christian curriculum. But everyone has their own approach to home education. Everyone has their own style and way of teaching. I believe that home educators definitely get the best out of socialising and interacting with different people. We had the opportunity to choose who we mix with, unlike school where you are put into classrooms and groups that you may not fit into. In 2016 to 2017, there were over 45,000 students that were being home educated in the UK. and over 29,000 of those home educators were registered with their local authority. But these numbers aren't to be confused with the US, topping up to 1.5 million home educators in 2010 to 2011. But there's also a huge dynamic between home education versus school. These are two completely different approaches and different ways of learning. Sometimes home education isn't an option, school is the only option. There are some countries where home education is illegal, but they make up for that by having a better education system. Countries like Germany, Sweden, Denmark, Switzerland, and there are many more. Some home educators will home educate because they want a religious approach, while others choose this due to their child having special educational needs. The parent can then have one-to-ones with them and the child can get the help that they need. I'm talking to two families, one who sees with a Christian curriculum and one that does not. They each have their own approach, so let's see how they compare. I chose to home educate my children because it's a shame that children can't learn in context, in the real world. So for example, if you're learning about geology, it would be great if they were in amongst the rocks on the beach. If you're learning about castles, it'd be great if they could be in a castle with a bow and arrow. Um, so that was what I was really hoping to get out of home education. But I began to sort of check in with myself whether I thought this was a good idea or not. I'd barely heard of it. And so I had decided to write a pros and cons list. I really shocked myself because in 20 minutes, I reeled off 98 different reasons for home edding and I never really got to the cons list. I just had been reading for about six months um, of other people's experiences and had been thinking, oh, this is an actual thing. It is actually possible. It sounds very plausible. So um, after I'd written that many, I said to my other half, maybe we should give it a go, take it term by term and keep them, well, keep in contact with the local school so that if it isn't working out for any reason, we can slip into school. Uh, we built up a community of home education friends and we built up a community within our local village so the children had the option to go either way but it wouldn't have been a shock in any way for them to slide into the school system. So we thought we'll just give it a go, term by term, see how it goes and um, I had been a teacher. You don't need to be and that isn't necessarily a benefit. You keep hearing the school bell in your head every 45 minutes which is a bit stressful. <laughs> You don't have to change subjects every 45 minutes in home education. But um, it did give me a little bit of confidence that I could give them, offer them a balanced curriculum and keep track of their progress. I don't use too many curriculum at all. Basically, I tend to teach for a term, go back to the curriculum, this is national curriculum, and tick off um, where we're up to. So I try to do it retrospectively. So if I plan, I notice that we're not moving forward organically and with their interest at the forefront. And um, it's more about trying to tick boxes. It doesn't become as fun and creative. But if I teach 
almost backwards to the curriculum. What happens is at the end of a term I very often find we've ticked off pretty much most of what I would want to do anyway but it's great for pointing out the gaps if we haven't. I do believe homeschooling has been very beneficial to our family. Um, there's lots of examples. I just love the fact that they can be outside in the good weather. Um, they're not having to be outside when they don't want to in the cold weather. Um, I think it's very good even just to get the dose of vitamin D for example during the day. I think it's great that they can um, move forward in the areas that they feel most passionate about and catch up later in other areas if it hasn't been for example um, their thing until they're older to get good at spellings. They've had more time um, to focus on things that they're really into and um, especially if it's a, a young child it's great that they can do lots of concrete activities using real equipment. I chose to home educate my children for a range of reasons, um, two reasons in fact. I felt like I had a calling on my life to take them out of the school system and teach them from a Christian point of view and the second one was just down to my elder boy who had a few emotional issues um, that I won't go into for, if, for the interview. Um, I just felt like he needed me more than I could, um, he needed me more than I was able to give him at the time because I was working full time and I needed to have him home. So really it was just because of um, emotional reasons for my older son as well as um, religious reasons. Home education has been beneficial for a number of reasons. I think I've learned a lot more about my children, um, about their personality traits, their learning styles. We get to spend a lot more time together. Um, they're with me all the time, so it's like they're supervised constantly. Um, they're, they're, they're better with their relationships with each other. Um, it's definitely been beneficial in many different ways, I'd say. I think that more, if families want to home educate their children, I think that they should definitely go for it. I think it's really, um, it's quite um, impactful and powerful knowing that you have that full responsibility for your child. It can be nerve wracking as well, knowing that you have that full responsibility for your child. But I think that um, parents are the first educators of their children anyway, and they naturally do it from the child, their child from the time their child is born until they send them off to school. They're they're doing it naturally anyway. So I would recommend it. I think I think it's it's it needs. I think it's one of the best things that you can give to your child. Working part time as a teacher as well as homeschooling and being a mum, the only way to juggle it is to let one of them go. So I had to resign as a primary school teacher to home educate my children and work from home. So the only way that I can make it work was to work as a self-employed person. So I now tend to tutor my children, I'm sorry, tutor other people's children from home and work with my children. So even though I'm working with other children, my children are still in the home with me. So I know that if they, if they need anything, then it's just a knock, of the, knock at the door away. So I'm not really away from them as such, maybe just like a distance away, but not really away. Um, other things I've been able to do is supply teaching, but what we do is that I, um, now that I'm married, I basically cross over with my husband. So the days that he's working, he will stay home with the children and supervise and homeschool them while I'm at work. And then we hand over on the days that I'm at work and he's at home. After speaking with these families, I found out why these specific families home educate. And that Sophia feels that being a teacher doesn't often help as one would think. And with Joelle, she likes to keep her boys entertained with doing activities that improve their learning and so that they stay stimulated. Now I have come to Swindon to talk to Nathan Fields, who is a teach manager for a Christian curriculum. My name is Nathan Fields. I was home educated uh, from the age of five. Uh, my mum uh, was a primary school teacher by trade and I remember she was very impressed by the the, the program, how it was structured, um, and I guess that training helped her a little bit with the, with the home education to start with. She wasn't perhaps as fearful as others would be. So with home education, uh, quite a number of families will start and then stop. Uh, generally, they'll do that in a very short period of time, uh, and they've started home education for the wrong reasons. Uh, sometimes it's societal pressure, sometimes it's circumstantial. Um, we've had quite a bit of that. Um, you know, there's quite a lot in the news recently about how specifically schools are struggling to support children with special educational needs um, and sometimes families have, have used home education as a bit of a stopgap while they get a, uh, some provision, educational provision met uh, for those children. Uh, to give you some idea, in the last year, I very recently just this week did a, a check and we've had a, a hundred and uh, five families sign up in the past year. Uh, so that's, and that's 105 families start and continue uh, with, with home educating. So it's something that's definitely growing and is becoming more visible. And in that 
uh, regard it's, it's sort of catching up with other countries. Uh, because although we have a, a, an idea of home education in the UK, I actually work with the Global Home Education uh, Exchange, uh, which is a network of, of global home educators, and, and it's actually growing much more rapidly in other countries than it e even is here in the UK. It's, it's a really, a, homeschooling is a global movement that's, that's growing all around the world, um, and the UK is just a small part of that. Home education is definitely becoming more popular um, across the board, yes. It's, it, we see it in, in Christian circles, we see Christians more um, uh, sort of aware of, of home education as a viable option, uh, but I, I don't think I'd still say, although ho home education in the Christian community has increased, I wouldn't say it's increased at the fastest rate of any other groups. Um, I think it's, it's home education is just becoming a more viable option. Uh, you know, if you're, even if you're studying national curriculum, there are multiple tutoring organisations out there now. There are uh, online schools that will teach GCSEs and A-levels from, you know, the comfort of people's own home uh, living rooms. And, um, and there is even, you know, I've been looking recently at an organisation that's set up that will actually, uh, you can hire trained teachers who are working in schools for their nine to five, but they want to earn a little bit of extra money. Um, and they will come to your home and, and tutor you specifically for, for a GCSE or an A-level. And there are thousands of people on that system. Um, so it's definitely, it's growing everywhere. I think, you know, as, as technology changes, as people uh, become more connected through social media, um, these different options uh, actually become more viable. And, and people will choose. I think what, we'll, what we're saying is, uh, rather than people going down a funnel of, of this is the way to go, uh, with apprenticeships as well, the workplace is changing, more jobs are becoming available in lots of different sectors that didn't exist 50 years ago. Um, and I think that education is, is sort of, oh, so home education is partly answering some of those things in that at a, quite a young age, children can tailor their education to whatever they want to do. Um, you know, I've heard stories of, of children as young as 12 or 13 learning programming languages uh, because they know they want to work with computers and so they will, will focus so much of their energy and attention onto their studies in computing uh, and by the time they're sort of hitting university age they've learnt more than, than I did at university um, and I think, yeah, that's partly the reason why we're seeing growth across the board is, is just, it's a change in society. Um, it's something that can't really be controlled, which is something that a lot of people don't like. Uh, but uh, I think it's uh, I think it's a really interesting time, and I think it's uh, there's a lot of opportunity there. In a funny way, one of the biggest threats to Christian home education has been the church itself. Um, in historic historically, the ch churches haven't been very positive towards home education. Uh, when my family started, we were the only family in the church home educating. And that was the case for probably about 10 years before another family started. And then there was a bit of a, uh, you know, a, a crescendo effect where one family started, then you had five or six families starting all of a sudden in the church. But I've heard many stories of uh, Christians who have had very negative comments from um, Christi other Christians in their congregations, even from pastors, very negative towards um, home education as a concept. Uh, the idea being that, that children should be salt and light in the school system and um, and I, you know you can talk about why those concerns aren't valid because you're throwing your children into a situation um, almost using them as a battering ram uh, to sort of uh, you know you go and be salt and light in the world uh, without teaching them anything. Now that's not to say that you can't be a Christian and be in a school environment because um, I was amazed when my wife went to university uh, I was going down to to visit her at the time, it was, we were engaged, and um, it, you know she was one of only a few Christians in the Christian Union and, uh, and in her church who uh, had been home educated. Um, I think there was one other uh, person, um, but uh, I was, you know, I was amazed at the faith of, of these people who'd been through the school system. And so it's not to say that you can't be in in a secular ed, uh, system and and keep your Christian faith intact, uh, and in and in fact have your Christian faith thrive. But I'd say that's one of the main challenges is actually home education as a concept for Christians and for Christian churches in the UK. It's almost been held back uh, because of that negativity. 
in a way. Um, that's been one of the main threats. Um, and then, you know, in, mo in more recent times, I think home education is being assigned to religious beliefs. So, you know, the, 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 um, the storyline that's being sold is, is people are home educating now because of, of their religious beliefs. Well, actually the top three reasons for home education growing in the, in the UK is a lack of, of provision for special educational needs, bullying in schools, and a lack of uh, individualization in terms of a child's individual academic needs. Those are the three, and that's, that's you know, research that's been done into why people home educate, and those are the three top reasons, and they take over 50% of the reasons as to why home educating and, and actually religious beliefs um, are a very small part of the pie. Um, so I think that um, in terms of the threats towards home education, Christian home education, um, they actually mainly come through the, Historically, they've come through the Christian home education movement, um, and at the moment, I think we have to be careful not to assign what's happening out there to religious beliefs when, when actually it's 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 not. It's there are other reasons. Generally, even in the past year, few years, the reasons that I, when I've seen um, home educators start with with CE, um, we ask them, you know, what what made you choose to home educate. Um, and they're not saying, oh, because of you know the Christian principles or, or you know because of the, the teaching of the Bible. Um, it's it's often circumstantial. It's because they've had a bad experience in school. They look to an alternative, and then they see there's a Christian home educating alternative, and they choose it. I understand why these parents want to home educate their children. Sophia wanted to give her children a Christian education. Joelle does it because she wants her children to be more involved with their learning and experience new things. They all have valid reasons to home educate, and they have all given their children the chance to experience school. But home education isn't the only option. There are other alternatives. You can attend a Steiner school, which is an independent way of learning, and you can attend to the age of 17. The Steiner way is teaching through play. Another option is Montessori education. Their way of teaching is to isolate each level of learning or whatever stage a student is on. This is a very hands-on, mixed with collaborative play. And the last is small community school. In this school, they teach their students respect, democracy, and fairness. And the students will then focus on the academics, health, social services, youth, and community. But there have been debates on whether parents have the right to take their child out of school. If it's in the best interest of the child, the parents should have that choice. Do you think that home education is a good step for children that don't often work well in the system? While home education has been around for a while, it's still adapting for everyone's different views, beliefs, and ways of living. Home education is still growing. And will those numbers get higher?